So you might think that this is the rear of the car right here. Is that the rear of the car? Is that the exhaust we're it's looking not. at? That's the front. Let's show them the, let's, the, let's show them the actual rear though, real quick. This is the actual exhaust. I love it. It looks like it's going to start shooting flames and take off. It, it really looks like a jet engine. She took a NASA rocket and just shoved it in a car. <laughs> pretty much, right? I mean, I'll be honest, there's definitely technology that talks directly to that that we're working <laughs> with. Uh, but yes, uh, yes and no. Guys, welcome to Columbus, Ohio. We are here with Angelo, the CEO and founder of Hyperion. That's right, that's correct. Yep. So tell us a little about what's sitting behind us here. What you guys are looking at is the XP1. Uh, this is actually one of our first engineering prototypes. And uh, what we're gonna be talking about is why we built this car, what it means to the hydrogen industry and what it means to this area specifically. I mean, this thing looks amazing. I'd love to hear about it. Hydrogen is really great technology uh, for automotive use. It's also really great for mass energy storage, uh, which is our primary focus. So we wanted to get people excited about hydrogen, right? And so the other thing that you can use a lot of power for is huge, huge acceleration, huge top speeds. And that's what this vehicle is all about. Uh, this is the XP1. Uh, and what it does is uh, it basically delivers a lot of power to all four wheels uh, to get you a very, very fast, zero to 60, uh, actually 2.2 seconds, uh, and a very high top speed over 200 miles an hour. This communicates why hydrogen is so good for automotive, right? And what you can do with a car like this is you can refill in three to five minutes, and what's unique about that is that this is actually an electric vehicle. Not unlike most other battery electric vehicles you guys have heard of, uh, this will actually have the same torque on those motors um, and it will have the ability to, uh, to be green, right? And that's what hydrogen is all about. Hydrogen stores electrical energy in the bond between the hydrogen molecule itself, right? What this will do is it'll take the hydrogen, it'll inject it into this engine, um, it'll pass by a, a, a plate, right? That plate is called a fuel cell plate, right? Uh, that's going to be a membrane electrode assembly. It's going to have a catalyst on there. That catalyst is going to have a reaction with the hydrogen, right? It's going to separate on the anode and the cathode side, and there's an electron that's going to charge the vehicle. The more hydrogen you pass through, the higher the power is going to come out of this engine. And uh, that power will actually move these wheels, and this, this car will actually uh, go from that hydrogen energy. And it recombines the oxygen on the other side of that, that cathode uh, to basically create water. So hydrogen, if you imagine two hydrogen atoms sort of locking arms uh, together as a molecule, uh, separating, releasing an electron, and then recombining with oxygen to make H2O. So your only byproduct is actually water uh, from a vehicle like this. So in many ways, it's powered by water because the way that you actually create hydrogen in a green way is taking water and using the process of electrolysis and splitting it up from its basic form. So H2O, right? Hydrogen, oxygen. So now you're creating oxygen and hydrogen. The hydrogen you could actually use in an engine like this, and now you have a green total closed loop system. It becomes water again, you can create hydrogen again, right? And that's what Hyperion is all about. So while the car is exciting and we appreciate you guys' enthusiasm for the car, it really is about what you can do with this technology. And what we're gonna do and why we're in Columbus, Ohio, is this is going to be the factory with which we're gonna make all these hydrogen power plants, right? These fuel cell modules. The main takeaway uh, from us today is that the car is very exciting because of the technology. The technology is very unique in of itself, separate from other hydrogen companies, in that this engine can actually last three times longer than most hydrogen engines. And that's because it has a very, very cool catalyst technology that preserves the platinum, right? It does not allow it to degrade as quickly. And that is why uh, this is so unique in its engine form, not just because of the raw power, but also because it has this durability. This car can go 1,000 miles, it can refill in three to five minutes, and the engine can last over a million miles because of that catalyst. And that's the, the very exciting things that we're doing here uh, in Columbus with some exciting partners that we're gonna be announcing very, very soon. Uh, we'll talk all about that uh, locally here too. So how do you feel like this current technology compares to when manufacturers from about 10, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, there was a, a big hydrogen push? So is there a difference between what you're coming out with yes. uh, from the original? Number one, what's changed is fuel cell modules became much, much cheaper. They used to be millions of dollars, right, for a fuel cell module. And that is the biggest thing that's changed. That's because uh, all the support network and all the big OEMs pushing for this, and you may have heard of a lot of big ones pushing for this, brought those costs down. 
The other thing that changed is, is how you tackle this infrastructure, right? Part of what we want to do here in Ohio is build more stations to build the infrastructure. So you can ask what's different. Number one, the costs have come down. Number two, we have this unique technology that's much more durable and a product. There have been more products that have been released since then that are actually viable that people can purchase and drive today. The other thing that's very unique, right, and this is uh, more a teaser of what's coming, is that we can now build stations for a lot cheaper. And we'll be introducing some of those products uh, uh, coming up, right? And so the station infrastructure has always been the hurdle. The biggest problem with hydrogen, everybody knows it's great. It's been used in industrial industries for a number of years, right? They refine, for example, natural gas and gasoline with hydrogen. Uh, so hydrogen is actually already a robust industry, um, but how do you transfer that to many other industries? And there's three main industries that can utilize hydrogen the best. Um, and we're going to show you guys how to best do that on these coming announcements. But the key takeaway is to simplify hydrogen, to bring the cost down, and then to be able to, to basically mass produce. And that's what we're able to do here. So one thing I didn't mention about this is we've actually been able to reduce the cost even further than most hydrogen fuel cells by reducing the platinum, right, by 50%. And that's a big deal for, for, for an actual engine like this that's going to use a rare earth metal like that. So it's all about cost reduction. And that's what's new about this, and new applications so that the infrastructure is not such a hurdle. Do you see these new stations producing their own hydrogen, like on site, or is there gonna be like a distribution network to get that there? So currently, it's distribution networks in other stations. I can't answer that question without giving it away, <laughs> right? Okay, so I won't. Uh, but I can tell you that uh, you're on the right track, and uh, it's really exciting to be able to centralize uh, certain uh, electrolysis processes. So do you consider yourself more of just like an energy company that's putting it in the car really to, to show off and yes. bring this to the world? Yeah, it, we are 100% energy company. The car is literally just a sales tool to get the idea across. We love the car, we're car guys. My background is cars, I studied transportation design. I have background engineering also. You know what, it was fun to, to design this car, it was fun to build this car. Um, but more than anything, you know, we're, we are a corporation that's focused on, on, on making things happen to change the industry. The biggest way you can decarbonize the world is by actually storing mass energies. And batteries today just can't store energy on a mass scale. Past seven megawatts, it really doesn't make any sense financially, right? What you can do with hydrogen, instead of having to duplicate a battery over and over and over and over and over again, for when you still uh, sell, uh, um, store something on very large scale, is actually just have a larger tank, right? So large tanks are very cheap for hydrogen. So what you can do, for example, you take wind, you take solar, which takes energy very irregularly, and you can basically create a bank. Imagine like a, any bank you can go to to store your money, except now you're storing electricity. Today, big energy companies want to build solar. Solar's cheap now. Wind is, is not expensive either. They want to build bigger solar farms, but it makes no economic sense because there's no way to store the energy. When you introduce hydrogen as the energy storage mechanism, now you can store huge 100 megawatts all the way to gigawatt range with this type of technology. And that's exactly what we're going to do. That is our focus, to change and to decarbonize the world by creating a bank of energy that can be used. And energy companies are excited about that too. And are gonna be announcing some cool stuff with those two as well in the future. So being more of an energy company and then presenting this car, you're building what, 300 of them? We are planning to build 300 of these things. They'll probably be not 300 every year, it'll probably be a grand total of 300 over several years. So okay. it'll be a, a very limited production of this vehicle and there'll probably be a few iterations of this same vehicle on the same chassis with different uh, trims and et cetera uh, for this particular car. Um, so yes, to answer your question, it is very limited. So the dedication to, because obviously the, being the energy company and then you know being a car company are kind of two two different things in yes. a way. So yes. like the, the dedication towards making this a car company from dealer networks to after sales, you know, is that going to be kind of like fully fully supported? Yes, yes. Because of the limited volume, it'll be uh, significantly easier for us, right? The things you mentioned are, are definitely difficult on a large scale. On a small boutique level, it's not as challenging, right? From a production perspective and also from a, a customer support perspective. So yes, we will provide that full service range. Um, one thing though about the car, and it is exciting, uh, there are a few features that I want to point out. Um, you know, not only does it look as cool as we, as we want it to look, the whole idea in our theme is like space technology for the road, right? Now that's not arbitrary. We don't, we don't just like the way that sounds. Like this actually has some really cool stuff in it. And, um, and we do work with NASA on a number of things, right? So there are several uh, uh, commercialized technologies that we are actually uh, using from NASA that are in this car that are pretty cool in of itself. One for storage, one for power management, and a few others that are gonna be announced a little bit later. But one of them actually is in this wing specifically, right? But this actually wing uh, is adjustable, I'll tell you why. Number one, uh, it can adjust for aerodynamics. So it can break up 
up the flow of air around the car. Uh, so you have active aerodynamics for handling and cornering. So this will actually move in this orientation. The other thing that this wing does because it moves is allows you to actually pivots to, to hit different angles of the sun. Why? Because this actually is a, a solar wing specifically. So it has a, a very unique NASA technology uh, called multi-junction solar, uh, and that allows you to basically have three times the, the, the uh, energy capacity uh, and the, the basically ability to grab that energy in a much smaller surface area. So this whole thing's gonna move? That it moves. More. It moves actually in this direction. That's the whole right. thing, or is it going to be the whole thing? Panels? The whole thing moves in one direction, right? The main takeaway from this vehicle uh, is it does have some really cool, um, you know, engine technology. It's all about the engine technology, which you see right here. Uh, there are some cool technologies that we're going to introduce uh, later that are also part of this car that are going to be a, a separate announcement. But when it comes to car design relating to fuel cells. The, the, magnet, the magic sauce is all about the chemistry, right? So the catalyst chemistry, the material science, that is what's most important in this vehicle and how that works specifically. When I told you that, that durability we talked about, the 3X durability, that's what makes this thing so unique. That million mile target for the DOE that we're trying to, to eclipse, which we already have done that. Uh, we are doing that to make these more viable across the board, not just for this application, but obviously if you're in a commercial truck, you want that to be you know, a, a long lasting vehicle. So what type of routine service would a typical XP1 or Hyperion hypercar owner look at? So in terms of, of service, I would say that uh, you know, these things are basically electric vehicles that take care of themselves. The, the cool part about this vehicle, even though it's electric, is it does have a nice throaty sound, right? And so you'll get like a like like it's the sound of a blower ramming oxygen into this side of the engine. Right? Uh, and so what that will actually do is, is produce, of course, that byproduct water. And so you talk about maintenance, there, it, it really is self-sustaining in the fact that it's going to process and, and have water coming out of that exhaust, right, in water vapor form. And so there's not a ton of maintenance on this vehicle. If think about it like any other battery electric vehicle. Uh, the only difference is there's going to be a bit of water vapor. That's the only difference in this car. So it's not like your normal internal combustion engine, which is, is, is very inefficient by comparison. Uh, it's a, basically an engine. Think of this as an engine. It definitely looks like one. Uh, that takes hydrogen, turns it into power in the electrical form, and because it's all chemistry, this really is, is, is maintenance uh, free for the entire life of this, this product. So you really don't have to worry about too much maintenance. So it's really just your brakes, tires, and really everything else takes exactly. care of itself due to the hydrogen. Exactly. It depends on how, how you're driving this thing, for sure. That's amazing. This technology is absolutely incredible. What really gets me going as a car guy sure. is just looking at this thing, <laughs> right? So like, yeah. I mean, like the design, I mean, I see a little bit, you know, we drove the Bugatti in here today. Sure. I can see a little bit of Bugatti in it sure um, you know like this line right here I mean it just looks it's just like all the hypercars that we have and that are out there like on steroids sure sure so, so like obviously that's amazing and I the technology is something cool I think it'll be better for the planet we can get that going yes like just looking at it alone Thank gets, you. Gets a car guy just so hyped that it's ridiculous. We talked about hydrogen as a, as a way to take different types of energy and turning them to power, right? So the solar wing represents wind. It, it basically wraps around the car uh, and is shaped by the wind itself, right? So this represents wind, it all re represents solar. The blue accents you see actually come through uh, the actual uh, wheel here. If you, if you look a little bit closer, this will actually sweep through here and come right back through this A pillar. This represents water, right? Because water is the foundation for how you create hydrogen and the byproduct of hydrogen. And the roof, right, this canopy, we wanted to give people this massive, this is a very large canopy and there's a very large screen inside this also. Uh, we wanted to give people the, the feeling of being inside of a spaceship. So it says space on the back there in between the two exhaust tips. That's right, yes. So what's the connection with, with the space? I see your shirt on yes. right there. So like, what, where's that connection for so you? So there's seven different pieces of, of NASA technology that are incorporated into various Hyperion products. Uh, this has about uh, four of those, those different technologies. So that's the connection uh, immediately. The other thing that's exciting and again, this is teasing into some stuff that we can't talk about, as uh, there is some involvement uh, with NASA, uh, with another one of our partners, on putting the technology that's going to be announced on the next press release, uh, basically on the moon. So this is a space technology without question. 
Uh, it is a technology that's going to do some amazing things. To get the weight down, is, are you going to make this out of carbon fiber or what is yeah, the material? That's right. So it's all carbon fiber. There's carbon fiber and titanium. There's a, actually a unique alloy. One of those NAS technologies is a very, very uh, cool uh, aluminum alloy that, that you can basically cast really advanced, complicated parts that was normally used on rocket engines, right? So there's a really cool casting technology using a very lightweight aluminum for some of the technology on the suspension. There's some titanium that's actually part of the carbon fiber. But to keep the weight down, as you can imagine, a lot of advanced advanced exotic materials uh, to really make this thing as light as possible. And the benefit of low weight with hydrogen, it's actually the first element on the periodic table because it's the lightest thing in the, in the universe. It's also the most abundant thing in the universe, which is why hydrogen is so great for space travel. One thing that people don't know is that hydrogen is the preferred source of space travel for NASA since the Apollo mission. So NASA has a ton of really exciting hydrogen stuff, which is why we were so excited to work with them on some of these cool technologies. So to answer your question about space, to answer your question about the technologies, they're all connected about bringing in low weight. Anything that's going to the moon or going out of space needs to be very lightweight. Hydrogen is the best thing to do for that. And that's what this car is doing, except instead of going to the, the moon and this one, you're just gonna go around a corner really, really fast and accelerate really fast because of that low weight. So you took a NASA rocket and just shoved it in a car, <laughs> pretty much, right? I mean, I'll be honest, there's definitely a technology that talks directly to that that we're working with, uh, but yes, uh, yes and no. <laughs> so this is what, just yeah. over 2,000 pounds, complete package? Yes, that's right, yeah. That's, that's correct, incredible. Yeah. Yeah, have that's you released incredible. a price on it yet? We have not released a price on this thing yet, uh, and there's a reason for that. We'll get, there's a very unique way in which you'll have access to this vehicle, uh, which is part of what we're going to be doing in the next uh, few releases. Okay, yeah. which leads into my next question. Do you have all 300 customers? Is it already all sold out? We have had a great deal of response on this thing when we launched this vehicle initially. Uh, and so we're really excited about that. But the, the key takeaway, and I don't want to lose focus, as much as I love this car and as much as I love building it with the team, um, we really want to decarbonize the, the earth, right? And if this car can help us do that, we're going we're gonna to do that. If this car can help tell the story of hydrogen, then, then all for the better. So to answer your question, yes, we have an overwhelming response for the vehicle itself. We are going to make it very limited, and it will be tied to the company in, in, in one or two ways, specifically with how we reduce carbon emissions. So yes. Do you see a car going to the, the mass market? You know, there's a lot of opportunity with the, the next technology we're going to talk about for a mass market car. Um, I think right now, hydrogen stations are a challenge, and so I don't think it's quite ready with the existing technology so that other companies are doing. Build out the infrastructure first. Well, actually, to that point, our infrastructure solutions, as well as our, our future in energy solutions, which we're going to announce, I think will make hydrogen cars more viable. But anytime you're thinking about hydrogen, the number one takeaway I want people to have in their mind is this is an electric energy storage mechanism, number one. And number two, it is used best for storing huge gobs of energy, right? massive energy storage. So when you have something really large, hydrogen makes a lot of sense, or you need a lot of power. These cars take a lot of power, obviously. A, a huge commercial classic truck takes a lot of power. You know, you know, trains, you know, huge shipping, these things take a lot of power. This is where hydrogen is the only solution when you want to electrify. Lightweight things like vehicles, right, that, that want to fly, if they want to be electric, hydrogen is the solution, right? That's why, again, we work so much with some of these very, very exciting technologies with NASA. The main takeaway, again, is that hydrogen is for lightweight, fast refueling, long range, and more importantly, massive, massive, massive energy storage. And so to answer your question about a mass market vehicle, I think that it's possible with our next technology we're gonna talk about, which we'll wait a little bit, but in the, in the, what I'm showing you today, it's probably best for really big stuff. Is it safe to say that this is the only, or hopefully soon to be production vehicle with NASA technology in it? That's a great question. You know, I have to, my, to do the, my knowledge. I don't, yeah, I have I don't to do the research. Other. I'd probably venture to guess that it has the most pieces of, the of most, NASA technology yeah. in it, um, without question. Um, but you know, I got to say, it's been a lot of fun uh, working with all the different research centers. Mm -hmm. They're very supportive, very, very excited about getting the word out about new technologies. And that's part of what we're here to do is to talk about those technologies and to get people aware uh, of all the wonderful things that NASA does that you don't see. Everybody sees NASA building rockets and going to the moon. But along the way, there's a ton of stuff that they've invented that people don't even know about. And some stuff you use today already, and some stuff you don't even heard about. And we're trying to bring you guys stuff that you probably haven't heard about. I mean, that's incredible. So you're gonna, are you gonna build a hydrogen station in Ohio? Oh, without question, yeah. No, you're standing on the future home of a hydrogen station right here on this campus, but also we wanna build infrastructure in Ohio and also spread that out to other states. And so, yeah, that is, again, definitely- So we're like plan. your target market, right? 
So like, we'll have it right here. We'll have one of these cars. We'll be your high mileage test mule. Actually, and we will just drive so the absolute shit best. out of it. I'll be honest, uh, it sounds like a great idea. <laughs> we'll take it through the snow. We'll, t we'll do it everything needs to, with it. You know, it's got to go through the snow. One, I, on that point, without to get too into the weeds, hydrogen doesn't mind cold weather. It doesn't mind hot temperatures either. Batteries do mind. So they need to be at an equilibrium. Hydrogen, it gets hot. It's okay with the heat. It can run 24 seven. It's, it's one of those industrial technologies that can weather the storm. And we just had a, a winter storm that I experienced here recently. And yes, hydrogen is good for that uh, also. So 100% you guys can test it. <laughs> for sure, awesome. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you for going around the car. I don't know if you want to touch on, on anything else, anything you want to you wanna get out. That was an there's amazing. A, there's yes. a lot of other stuff that yeah, we, we could talk about. There's some stuff on the rear end, but I think that I'm probably gotta go to be honest um you guys, so you guys have done this before you guys have we, pretty we have yeah. i mean yeah. i just i mean we, we have these cars we drive them sure and we drive the shit out of these things right yeah. so like most people are just keeping them in collections yeah so we just like we're just big fans of like getting yeah. getting out there we're getting a lot more well known around ohio yeah so we're taking it we're doing charity work with it we work yeah. with make a wish um, yep. nationwide children's hospital awesome. so we're doing a lot of stuff with the collection like okay. that so like if you ever want to use this car for any charity stuff let us know 100 percent right awesome yeah we have a big event coming june 5th okay yeah we yes. probably have the other car ready for you the full interior car and all that so stuff there, yeah. last year we had about twenty thousand people okay at cool. it. first first year was twenty thousand people we're really proud of this thing and the fact that it can make such a splash like that so anything like make wish makes me feel good i got two kids obviously want to you know promote good things like that for well, sure well we're really excited to have you in columbus it's, yeah it's very. neat to have this technology. Yeah, I'm telling you guys, it's just the beginning. You, you, I, I try to to keep it I can at bay. Feel you like oh, kind there's of some crazy shit that to, we're about to, to it's yeah. gonna change everything. Yeah, I just think it's cool because it really feels like they took a NASA rocket ship and shoved it in a car. Well, it That's so what it sounds like. You've never seen before, like like these wings. How the whole I mean, thing moves. The whole thing moves to get sunlight and to adjust like an active arrow to right. give you more downforce when th turning. It's amazing. But but you've never seen anything like that. That's what's so cool. I don't know how we're gonna get one, but we're gonna get one. We're gonna get one. Are we saying it right here? We're gonna yeah. get one. We're gonna get. I mean, they're gonna build a hydrogen station here. Right. Like, it's it would make sense to do it. I actually think he's lying. I don't think it's hydrogen. I think it's like black hole technology. <laughs> like that's a black hole. Like when it's operational. Does this have black hole technology? Is that what this right is? In. It looks like a, it looks like a black hole's in there. That'll, look at this thing's barely holding on. <laughs> I, I, it, it I will, do. It'll suck you right in. I that, do. That's love, no joke. This is probably my favorite part on the car, though. I love that. Right here. It's pretty. I mean, neat. you know, and I think part of it is because you've never seen anything like that on any other car ever made. It's so different. And that's the fact what I that love. this is actually going to be produced. It is interesting, though, that he's passionate about cars, but he's more passionate about his carbon footprint. Well, right? like I think I think that's like to be a car guy and see this and not just like want to geek for, out about not it. go for yeah. this. If you can really get to the point where you can store that efficiently and distribute it efficiently, like game over. Correct. Game over. What? By, where, who's Elon? Zero emissions. I'm gonna call him Egon. Zero. <laughs> It's not Elon anymore. It's Egon. So He's gonna go. One thing that Jay and I were talking about over there is: Do you guys know how much a Plaid weighs? I'd guess like 4,000. 40, 47.50. Wow. Take a guess. This is 22.75 or below. Yeah. Right? 20, hold on, 2,050. I think it's less than a Miata. It's what? It's 700 pounds lighter than a Senna. That's, that's insane. That, it, that's why it's a rocket ship. Seriously. It's, it's, an, it's a NASA rocket ship disguised in a I mean, it better have with, good aero. With two black holes on it. The spinners are making a comeback. Oh, yeah, look at that. I just want to drive it. That's the problem. It's like, I, know. I don't want the prototype. I want to hear it. He was talking about, Angelo was talking about how, you know, the air coming in, combining with the hydrogen makes like a yeah. whoosh sound. So, so that fact alone sells me on this over, let's say any other EV, because there's I no can't, sound. I can't, I can't take, take synthetic silence. sound. No. I can't take silence. I need to hear a car. But to hear that. Are you saying you don't like my Tesla? I, I don't love it. That's right. You heard it here first. That's why I'm not getting mine. I had it on order. I drove his. I was like, breaking news, <laughs> breaking Whack. news. You know, you were you were super now. excited for 10 minutes. Like, I can't wait to get mine. Well, that, that's the thing about Teslas. They're fun for 10 minutes. And then you get over the gimmick of like, OK, but I am getting a normal steering wheel. <laughs> like, that's all you do. I mean, so we've we've invited Angelo and the Hyperion XP1 out to our event on June 5th. We are going to give him some information. Hopefully he can come. Uh, he's big into charities as well. I think he'll be there for sure. Yeah, I no think that'd be incredible. So we hope well, to see all you guys there too. On so if you want to see this car in person, not only this one, not only this, it'll one. be the working. It'll be the working. The working one.